Welcome into the SBR Betting Roundtable. We've got some of the best minds in the sports betting business. Donnie Wrightside, Jeff Nadeau, Ian Cameron. We're going to be talking some NFL, college football. Also a little uh, NCAA basketball scandal here. we got best bets and the degenerate special. So let's go right around the horn, guys. Welcome welcome yourselves in. Uh, let's start off with Ian Cameron. Find him on Twitter, at Babano. Ian, how you feeling, buddy? I could be better. I got a little sore throat, but that's not going to stop me from being part of my favorite show all week, the round table, especially during football season. We got lots to talk about, uh, and I already feel a cough coming, so I'm going to hand it back to you, Drew. All right. Well, <laughs> thanks, thanks for uh, plugging through there, Ian, up in Canada. So next up, Donnie Wrightside. Find him on Twitter at WrightsideVP. His work at uh, Donnie Wrightside or WrightsideVP.com, Donnie WrightsideVP.com. Uh, Donnie, how are you feeling, buddy? NFL, college football. Excited to hear your opinions. Yeah, definitely. I, I love this time of the weekend, especially, you know, this show, 12.30 p.m. We all have a good time around here. Ian getting, I think Ian's getting a little bit choked up here because hockey's about to start for the season. You know, he's drained on all his energy from stockpiling over the uh, offseason there in the summer, and we're ready to get after it. We were on the show last night with Gabe and going over Vegas hockey last week. Amazing how quick these seasons change. Before you know it, guys, we're going to be talking NCAA football, NCAA basketball, NHL hockey, NBA basketball, college football, and pro football, and baseball at the same time. Woo, here we go, baby. Oh, quickly, I got to point out something. Hockey show news here at SBR coming very soon. Hopefully by the end of the week. That's all I can say right now, but something's coming. An announcement's coming, so hold on for that, hockey fans. All right, and last but not least, Jeff Nadeau. Find him on Twitter at Jeff Nadeau. He is a big man on campus. Welcome in, buddy. Hey, Drew. How you doing? Uh, I spent this morning researching Duquesne's men ba men's basketball. I'm on the route, Drew. I'm trying to go over every team. One by one, it's a long, tedious process, but hey, somebody's got to do it. Well, we did a show on Saturday where you didn't sleep. I only slept four hours. You said you were doing some NCAA basketball research? Yes, I'm on Duquesne. I'm in the D's right now. So I have a, I have a, I got to keep it going here. I'm, I'm trying to do a couple a day. So uh, I, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't sleep much. That's just me. That's, I don't like to sleep. Um, so I just try to, get involved with basketball, but football has been good. 11 of 17 I've hit. So I'm looking forward to keeping it going and getting involved in basketball as well. A lot to do, Drew. All right. Well, 11 of 16, you said that's pretty damn good, man. 11 of 17. Yeah. 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 All right. Good stuff. And, uh, Hey guys, let's just start off with the NFL. Um, you know, King, King of the, uh, betting handle anyway, and start off with, uh, Donnie right side, man. I know, you know, the NFL as good as anybody. What caught your eye? Taking a look at a couple things over there that caught my eye over the weekend. You know, if I start with the hometown Philadelphia Eagles for myself, a nice gutsy win. They would not have won this football game last year. Lost a lot of players, came into the game limping. A game Giants team finally getting, you know, their P's and Q's in order. I was really impressed by that. A couple things that I was not impressed by watching the overall game plan by the Los Angeles Chargers. And again, you know, we talk about, you know, new environments playing. There's no home field advantage for that football team for the rest of the season. They barely can fill up that stadium or even sell it out. Most of them aren't their fans a lot of apathy in that area. It's going to be interesting over the next couple of years, just taking a broad stroke here, what's going to happen actually with the Chargers and their fan support and what's going to take place in Los Angeles, but not looking good for them as a franchise right now. So what, they're sitting at 0-3, right, Donnie? Yeah. Do you think that... Oh, and a, and a bad 0-3. I and mean, if you take a look, they lost to the Miami Dolphins. You say, hey, you know, Dolphins coming in, Jay Cutler playing well. Well, the Dolphins going to get smoked by the Jets. You know, the Chargers are playing there, sitting on their home field, going against Kansas City. They could barely even move the football. Phillip Rivers is a shell of him for himself about 10 years ago. No explosive weapons on the Chargers right now. I know they have a nice front line. I like their front seven. I think it's decent. They're going to get Denzel Perryman back in a couple weeks to anchor that middle linebacking position. Already losing Verrett down a cornerback. Just, it's just not looking good for the Chargers right now. Man, and do you think that that has something to do with the move, or is this just a, a bad team? Yeah, I didn't have high hopes for the team coming in, but also you're just ripping them out of their fan base, moving them into, you know, Carson, California. There's no home field advantage. They probably don't even have a great headquarters set up or a practice facility to just mooching off somebody else. In a couple of years, they're not even going to own their own stadium. They're going to be a tenant in their own stadium in a city that probably doesn't want them. And it's hard enough to get people to go out to a ballpark to see, you know, multiple baseball teams. you got a hockey team, multiple basketball teams, college. They're going to be fighting, and it's going to be a hard market for them to penetrate. Absolutely. I mean, that L.A. market, there's a lot to do there. And I, I forget what the stats were exactly, but it, I believe it was the USC-Texas game or, or USC had a game 
and, and they had more fans at that game than the two NFL games combined. So uh, not a good start there for, for the NFL in L.A. But, uh, Jeff, let's bring you in, man. Do you have any other thoughts on the Chargers or what else caught your eye in the NFL? Yeah, I don't have much on the Chargers. Uh, I, I do want to talk about the Steelers. Uh, th this team has looked poor. I mean, they haven't been able to run the football. And Donnie and I talked about it. Uh, not only is Big Ben – not look good on the road, but he's not looked good on the road in his entire career. You look at the things going on with this team off the field, and I think, Drew, that was the big thing coming out of uh, last week. Not only the protests, but the, some of the teams that were involved heavily in protests, not coming out for anthems, those teams seemingly had tough days. Several of them, particularly the Pittsburgh Steelers, had a tough day. It's not so much protests. I've made it clear where I stand on that. It's the fact that it's screwing up routines. It's screwing up schedules. It's screwing up creatures of havoc that – do the same thing every week. Now you're throwing in, you got one guy on the field doing a protest and the rest, some don't want to do it, some do want to do it. It's just setting up a lot of issues in the locker room, and all of us are human beings at the end of the day. I know if before this show uh, we announced uh, we were going to do something totally different, it would throw us off a little bit. It's just how things work. And you look at the Steelers, not only has Le'Veon Bell not been much involved with this offense, but their quarterback can't do anything on the road, and uh, they have a lot of problems in the locker room. Their coach seems like he's on a soapbox giving his opinion every day on CNN. It's just they're, they're a team that concerns me going forward. They'll get it going. Le'Veon Bell will be fine, but right now it's kind of concerning with some of these teams with that. Yeah, I, want to, I want to mention one quick addendum to that, too. Uh, ben Roethlisberger's lost his ability to connect and find any sort of form with the deep ball so far this season, too. That has been a really major problem for him. Uh, you just worry that all that retirement chatter in the offseason, offseason regimen, his uh, preparation, whatever you want to call it, but I've been very disappointed with how he's thrown the football, especially – on on balls down the field like 20 30 yards or more he has been off he's been inaccurate with those throws we'll see if he can get that corrected and, and big man to follow up with you it, maybe for more of the surface level better that that may not know exactly what exactly is going on with the Steelers what other than just like kind of kneeling um during the national anthem what do you mean by throwing off their routine well, they're, they're they're not going out for the national anthem. They're, they're, there's a lot of things going on with – it's not so much kneeling. It's not the thought of kneeling. It's, you, you could protest however you want. I, I'm not against that at all. But it's just throwing off their normal routines of – there's a lot of issues in the locker room as far as many agree, many don't. It, it, it's just – like, for instance, Donnie, we've talked about when you go to the game, you have the same routine every game. Okay, you eat, you 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 get ready, you go out and practice, then you come in, you all go out as a team. It's a uniformed routine, and you're throwing it off. Your your mind's obviously and clearly elsewhere. So when you're looking at sports betting, you got to look at little things like that. And, Drew, it was no surprise that Seattle, they didn't come out for the National Anthem. They didn't play well. They've been uh, – Michael Bennett's been pretty much the vocal leader of the NFL about this. Uh, now the Kaepernick's gone – there's just certain teams that it's affecting, I think, a little bit. And it's been a little bit more than football. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be able to protest, but you should uh, be focused on your job because at the end of the day, your job is an NFL football player, and it's to perform at a high level. Um, I just think it's throwing the teams off a little bit. Donnie, do you, do you think that that could be used as a betting angle as far as betting on some teams or looking to fade other teams like the Steelers? Yeah, it's, I don't really think it's a betting angle, but it's an interesting attribute to the game plan because if you take a look at Mike Tomlin, even coming out from his presser yesterday saying, hey, look, you know, I'm a football coach. You know, I do a lot in the community, but I do it on my own time, which almost led me to believe like Tomlin's basically telling his Steelers, like, look, we got, we're a football team. You know, we're paid to win football games and go out and, you know, do that. Instead of, you know, having a meeting, you know, every 15 minutes on how we should actually protest this week or what's correct or what we can do. Look, let's break down some film. We're here to play football. And last week we had a fractured locker room. One, you know, veteran goes out and uh, stands for the national anthem. We stay in the locker room. The quarterback doesn't know what he should do now. The head coach doesn't know what he should do. There's fighting in the locker room. And he's basically saying, like, look, when it all comes down to it, like, Whatever you want to do on your own time, do on your own time. But when you put on that Pittsburgh Steelers uniform, we're here to play football and at the end also, of the day. And it's also showing, uh, to, to, to prove that point, if you heard Mike Tomlin, he said, we're all one unit, we all do what we do. 
So, so why was one person out and one, you know, there's just, it doesn't seem like it's going cohesively. Everyone needs to be on the same page. I give the guy the credit, Villanueva. He has a a passion. He he loves this country, and he's going to go out and do that. But it's just throwing off as far as for the team. I just think a lot of of things that they normally do. But I think going forward, I think it'll tone down a little bit. But um, yeah, I, yeah, it'll be over. Fine. Even like even even uh, what was it? Uh, Elway came out today, and basically said like, "Hey, you know, last week was great. You took a knee." And uh, you protested. You got your point across. Now it's time to get back to football. And I think the country agrees with that. Nobody. I don't think anybody at this point it reaches a crescendo where you know you start to fall in a deaf ear. Where who's protesting what? I don't even know what's going on anymore. Why don't we just get back to playing football in the next week or two? You won't hear about these protests very much any longer. As you can tell by the fact I'm lurking in the weeds here, I am sick to death of talking about all this. To be honest with you, play football. And so, I agree with Donnie. I don't look at this as a betting angle from uh, from any standpoint. I'd rather be a capper. I don't want to be Doctor Fraser Crane. I don't want to be Dr. Phil trying to get inside of these guys' damn heads. I don't want to do that. Well, it's nice to see, though, the NFL stepping up and, 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 and making their voice heard because their voice was heard, and that's great. And we all go back to the person that started this, Colin Kaepernick. All right, guys. Let's get into the actual handicapping of it. Um, take Carolina versus New England. Um, that's a game we're going to break down on this, this Sunday schedule. We got a, uh, what, nine, nine and a half, even five dimes showing a whacked out line of 10 and a half. Two, two and one teams, both one and two against the spread year to date. Big man, you want to start us off? Why is uh, New England commanding almost a 10 point uh, favorite role here? Uh, because Carolina is not very good. Uh, Cam Newton is really struggling. Uh, this offense is really struggling. They lose one of their best receivers on a team that doesn't have many good receivers. They lose their best receiver. Christian McCaffrey has really been the only person that's done much of anything. And I don't think he could take the whole team on his back and say, you know, I'm going to take us. He's a rookie. He's a guy that, um, you know, by the end of the season is going to be worn out with all the, the stuff that he's done. Cam Newton has been poor uh, defensively. Um, you know, their front seven's good, but overall, um, they, their secondary is not very good. They're just – most of all, they just can't score. And now they got to go on the road to New England. Uh, it's just a tough spot. I think my panel can agree here that Carolina has really struggled, and I don't think it's going to get any easier. Cam Newton has had one really good year in the NFL. Other than that, he's been just average to good. Um, Tom Brady, to me – Next man up in that offense. They just step in. They just, uh, cut, you know, you look at, you lose Edelman. You know, Gronk's been a little hurt, but he steps up. Cooks finally steps up. There's just so many people stepping up. Defensively, I think they still have a little bit of a problem. I expect Carolina to move the ball a little bit. Um, I'm looking to bet overs in New England games from here on out. Uh, this team, I mean, they score seemingly 30-plus points every game and give up in the 20s. I'm looking more along the lines of, of over here, but I think New England covers as well. Yeah, I'll piggyback off you. The Carolina, New England, I mean, I don't get much out of this football game. I'm probably going to stay far away from it, 8, 9, 10, wherever it ends up. If it take, goes up to 10 points, Jeff, we're probably looking at you really would have to lean with Carolina, even how bad they played on offense, because right now it doesn't look like New England defensive-wise is that good of a football team. But if you want to counter that and say, well, if New England's defense isn't very good, take a look at the Carolina offense, maybe down Kelvin Benjamin this weekend, obviously relying on Funches, no structured tight end over the middle. We'll see if they get Khalil back, which is an interesting cog that they need from the center perspective and you're not just going to go out in the NFL and just try to run the football and beat the New England Patriots you're going to have to throw the ball right now Cam Newton just can't do that but in the NFL it's hard just to win football games you saw that last week where Houston went up and damn near beat and probably should have beat the New England Patriots getting about 13 13 and a half points this one obviously closing a little bit less but if you have to make a play on this game Jeff you're right I'm not going to lean on Caroline at this point here give me New England I think they can win the game by 10 points but we'll see I, as it goes later in the week with some injury up I mean you look at Carolina I mean they, they've struggled to move the football I'm mean, only scoring 15 points a game but you look at against you know the defenses they've played I mean Buffalo's a great defense San Francisco's pretty good as well uh, New Orleans you only scored 13 points which is concerning but you know if they can get into that 13 to 20 point range Donnie I think this game's going to go over I mean New England I mean New England's going to attack that secondary and we all know Carolina has a problem in the secondary I think this is a 34 you know 20 type of game you know 35 you know 17 I think this gets up and over that 50 point mark at, at where we're at here it's just going to really hamper on Ken 
Carolina score points. I think they can here. I think they're good enough. They're, they're not great, but this is mostly going to be New England doing all this. I think we have to talk about what New England did last year to relate to what's going to happen to them throughout this year. Because last year, New England and winning the Super Bowl – and for being as public and popular a team as they are in the betting markets, they had one of the point spread excellent seasons you'll ever imagine. 16-3 and three last year were the New England Patriots against the spread regular season and playoffs combined. That's not supposed to happen for a team that's as public, as popular, and as dominated as they are among the betting masses. And obviously the books are, are forced, basically, to make an adjustment toward the New England Patriots. And that's already showing signs. I mean, they're one and two against the spread, but I got some massive concerns about what I think now could be a very, very flawed New England football team. I mean, the offense has been good at, 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 in times this year. They still miss Julian Edelman. They're still trying to work around that. The defense has been a massive problem. Matt Patricia's defense has been not just bad. They've been horrendous. I mean, you look at some of these numbers for their defense, 461 total yards per game allowed. That's dead last in the NFL. 5.1 yards per rush, 130.3 yards per game allowed on the ground. That's 31st and 26th in the NFL against the pass. They're allowing 330 yards per game, 8.8 .8 yards per pass. Those rank 30th or worse in the NFL. Those are horrendous numbers on the defensive side of the football. And who did they play in their first three games? Alex Smith. Okay, solid quarterback, but not elite. Drew Brees, good quarterback, but struggled mightily those first two games. And Deshaun yeah, Watson, but, rookie quarterback, making his first ever start on the road in, in a tough environment. And the New England defense has just been picked apart. And that's a concern because of the fact that this is an overvalued commodity. And if you're not getting stops on the defensive end, that's a concern. I want no part of laying the points here with New England. But the problem on the other uh, end of this spectrum is Carolina. And their putrid offense, which is just an absolute mess right now. Uh, Cam Newton is not getting time to throw the ball. And when he is, uh, he's not accurate with the ball. They missed the tight end, Greg Olson. Uh, Benjamin now injured. Who are the weapons that Cam Newton's going to use to throw the football to, uh, to make this offense go? Uh, I don't know if they are, they're going to be able to get it going. I think New England's defense is vulnerable. But damn, why is this the week they're playing Carolina? Why? Why? Because I don't know if Carolina is going to have a boatload of success offensively either. They're a mess. Hey, guys, let, let me jump in here. Is the mic all right right now? Yes, there we go. All right. Ooh, all right. Uh, yeah. With the fix here. Yeah, so, uh, you, Jeff, you, go ahead, buddy. Yeah, what you, you have you, on this game? Yeah, you would think, Ian, and I, you make good points. You would think, though, the defense will you know, kind of even out a little bit. The, the good point is, though, I mean, they have the best offense in the league. So, I mean, they, again, they're, they're, they're in a group where you would expect come playoff time, you know they're they're going to be at home. They're they're going to that's going to even out a little bit. I mean, even last year, I mean, they their defense wasn't very good. I mean, the good thing is nowadays in the NFL there aren't a lot of great offenses really. I mean, I that, think that's one thing you can hang your hat on. Plus, you look at their division. You're dealing with Jay Cutler, the Jets, and Buffalo, who um, can't move the ball either. No one in their division is really concerning from an offensive standpoint. But I agree. I mean, Patricia's got to be better. I mean, he comes across as this really smart, great coach. Uh, he's got to be better uh, defensively. And Ian's right. I mean, you know, I, I will say this. Drew Brees is great, as we know. And um, Alex Smith looks good as well. But what was your, you know, how did you give up 33 points to Houston? I mean, at home, uh, gets got they have to be better on that. Side. Yeah, let's put this in perspective with New England and their struggles here through three games. They nearly lost two straight home games in a row at Gillette Stadium for the first time since 2006. And if not for a pass that should have been picked off in the end zone by Houston, went right through his hands and right into the hands of Chris Hogan for that game-winning touchdown, uh, they'd have lost two straight home games to start the season, uh, the New England Patriots. So there are concerns particularly defensively, that this team's got to figure out they're an overvalued commodity. New England's a one-way team for me right now from a betting perspective. Either I bet against them or I leave it alone. Over. All right, boys. Well, um, hey, Ian, you just uh, finished up on the NFL. You, you, are you ready for 60 seconds with Cameron, or do we need to wait until next week? Well, well, you can do that, actually, right now, because we have some Johnny Manziel news in the CFL. He is not going to be awarded a contract by anybody. This season, at least not this season, uh, he met with Commissioner uh, Randy Ambrosi. It's done for this season. He will. He is not going to be allowed to be offered a contract by any CFL team this season. He will be eligible for one 
uh, in 2018 uh, next season, and the Ticats still own his negotiating rights, so it'll be up to them if they don't want to sign him. They've got 10 days to decide starting November 30th after the Grey Cup. And then if they decide they don't want him, they've got to either trade his rights or release his rights uh, at that time. So the Johnny Manziel to, to the CFL saga is over for now, but it's not over completely. All right. That was a good 60 seconds of Cameron. Thank you for that. Our, our buddy, Johnny Manziel. Yeah, I mean, he's our SBR friend. You got to keep everyone up to date. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks for that. That was great.